In this video, I'm going to set up an access point with a Raspberry Pi to extend my Wi-Fi coverage. Let's get started. So here I am on the Rasp AP website. Now Rasp AP is the software that I'm going to be using to extend my Wi-Fi coverage using a Raspberry Pi rather than an access point. So in a minute, I'm going to be taking you through the steps I'm going to do. So I'm using Raspberry Pi 4 with an Argon 1 case. So that's a really, really nice metal case. I love it a lot. But anyway, that's going to be my Wi-Fi access point. So I'm going to be doing these installation steps in a moment. But first of all, I'm just going to explain how I'm going to be using this. So currently, we have got in our house a router, just a standard ISP router. It's not very good. Um, the Wi-Fi signal from the built-in access point there isn't very good. So I am using a power line backhaul, which we already have set up, to my five port network switch which if you see my recent youtube short you will know all about that um, and then i'm going to run that into a raspberry pi to run an access point in my bedroom to extend mainly to my bedroom but also hopefully to a little bit of the um, upstairs as well uh, to hopefully extend the wi-fi coverage slightly now this is an experiment i don't know how well it's going to work um obviously the signal from a Raspberry Pi won't be great. It's kind of a proof of concept. I'm going to try running it for a few days, see how well it works, and I'll um, come back with my thoughts. So uh, first of all, I'm going to need to flash an SD card for my Raspberry Pi. So I'll see you over in Raspberry Pi Imager. Okay, so this is Raspberry Pi Imager. This is Raspberry Pi's official software for imaging an SD card, or indeed, as we're going to do today, a USB stick. So I have just made it bigger so that your resolution should hopefully be a little bit better. I've plugged in my USB stick, which I'm going to boot my Raspberry Pi 4 off through USB 3, which is quite nice and fast. So um, I'm going to choose my OS here, and for this install, we're just going to do a Raspberry Pi OS Lite install. So we're going to go here, Raspberry Pi OS, and we're going to pick Raspberry Pi OS Lite and the storage is going to be my SanDisk 64 gig USB drive so now I am just going to go to settings here so that then I can set up my um, set host name uh, and I'm going to enable SSH allow public key authentication um, and I am going to need to connect it to Ethernet in a minute anyway. But anyway, that's for just in a minute. These are the settings that I like to use for my Raspberry Pis when I set them up. So I'm going to save that and we are going to write. It says all this data will be erased. We know that. Let's go. Okay, so after just a few minutes, it's been written to our USB drive. So I'm going to now remove that from my computer, pop it in the Raspberry Pi, get the Raspberry Pi all wired up, and we'll start the setup. So this is the Raspberry Pi. It's slightly blocking my computer's airflow there, but we'll have to deal with it. I'm now going to pop the USB stick into the Pi. A little something like this. There we go. I've got this Ethernet lead here, which I'm going to take and pop into my lovely network switch. Okay, there we go, I've plugged it in, so I couldn't do it while holding my phone at the same time. And so we've got our third cable plugged into our five port network switch here. And that cable is now going to the Raspberry Pi. Now the clip on this cable is a bit dodgy. I need to get some new, some new cable, but um, or at least a new connector but there we go it will be fine for now uh, so i'm now going to plug in the usb c power which is already connected to the mains and we will wait for the raspberry pi to boot up once i press the button of course the fan on this argon one does make a slightly annoying noise but we'll have to live with it for now, I suppose. At least until I get the fan control software installed. So I'll see you back on my computer and we'll SSH into the Raspberry Pi. I've got the details, the host name and my key all set up in my lovely um, SSH client, Termius. So I'm just going to double click on the host and we'll see if it connects. Yes, we want to connect. And there we go. We are into our newly flashed Raspberry Pi and we are running 
on and Raspberry Pi OS Lite. Uh, it says Wi-Fi is blocked by RF kill, so we better set that up quickly so that we know it'll work. Um, so I'm just going to go to localization, locale, and we will go with uh, hoping for NGB once. NGB UTF-8 default location okay generating locales generation complete okay we'll go back into localization set our time zone Europe London okay that's already done um, okay, set our keyboard Okay, that one was also already done, and we will set our uh, y our legal Wi-Fi channels because otherwise we could be breaking the law. Uh, so Great Britain. So that is all done. So I will give it a reboot, and we'll see you once the pie is booted back up. Okay, so we're back in. We will just do a quick update in case Argon didn't do it for us already uh, in preparation for the Rasp AP install. So let's just wait for that to go through. Okay, there we go. It's all updated. Um, it, we just need to do another reboot, so I'll reboot and we'll be back in a minute. And there we go, we're back in our SSH session. So, uh, I've already set the Wi-Fi country earlier, so we don't need to do that. What I am going to do is run the quick installer for Rasp AP. So we're in the Rasp AP quick installer, um, so it's detected LOS, it's using the GitHub repository, yep, that's fine, complete installation with these values, yep, okay, so it's just updating the sources again, which we did do earlier, so now it's installing the packages. Okay, so it's now asking me our first kind of install question. Enable HTTP only for session cookies. Recommended. Well, if it's recommended, then yes, that seems like a good idea. So it's cloning the files. It's enable RaspAP control service. Yep, we need that so that we can actually um, control the thing. Configure ad blocking. Install ad blocking and enable list management now okay yeah we'll have that so it's fetching the host names list for the ad blocker and it's now fetching the domains list okay um configure open vpn support install open vpn and enable client configuration Yep, we'll have that in case we need it. Install WireGuard and enable VPN tunnel configuration. Yep, I suppose I might want a WireGuard VPN one day, and I'm trying to make this as low maintenance as possible so we might as well just go with a full install okay rasp ap install installation completed join rasp ap in sliders blah 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 yep let's reboot okay so that's obviously closed my ssh session so now once it's rebooted 
I should be able to go on my phone. Yes, my PC does not have Wi-Fi. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is in this situation. Um, and I am, before I join the Raspberry Pi uh, thing, I'm going to actually do a baseline speed test. So I will see you on my phone. So running the speed test, we see that we get speeds of about 16 meg, slightly different, can go down to 14 and 15. And we get uploads of about 10 usually. And here we can see that really it's lower than 10, it can be about eight. So there we can see we ended up with about 16 down and seven up. And there are a few of my other results recently running on the same network. So as you can see, not very high speeds. Okay, so I realised that it does allow us to view the portal on upstream. Uh, and I have finally managed to get my phone connected uh, by tweaking a few settings. I think it worked once I had it switched over to 5 gigahertz, So that's good. Um, so what we've got here is a really comprehensive management portal. Um, we can see my phone connected there. Um, and then we've got anything we could wish to change so we can change our wireless mode obviously i've got on five gigahertz changed my ssid and i've got my passcode here probably blur that um this is the advanced settings this is interesting um i've decided to leave it off bridged ap mode and to let it assign its own ip addresses but i could turn it on to bridged and then it would just be an ap um but i'm leaving it as a router as well for now so that i've got my own little um little vlan um which is quite nice and uh, there's just so much I can change that I haven't bothered doing. So um, I might do, yeah, well, I'll pop the, um, yeah, I will pop a uh, Cloudflare DNS in there. And we'll save those settings. And the settings are updated. Um, so that should uh, always run off Cloudflare DNS, which is my favorite DNS. So obviously I would want that. Um, I can do so much. I've got app blocking set up here. Uh, I've got networking settings, Wi-Fi client settings, so I can have it as a Wi-Fi client, which I'm not going to do uh, because I've got a, obviously a power line back call, so I don't need that. Um, Open VPN, which I'm not using yet, but as I said, I've installed it just in case I want it in the future. WireGuard, um, and then here I can get some good stats about data usage. Um, but having those four bars back again on my phone is just something that's really great and running off a of Raspberry Pi is just the perfect way to do it in my opinion because well uh, it's, I love Raspberry Pis and it's way more customizable. I've not I've not seen any decrease in Wi-Fi speed. I have done a uh, couple of speed tests and they come out about the same for the for my main router and for this new AP slash router but it does mean that there's a stronger signal strength, which would mean my phone doesn't drop off the Wi-Fi as much, which will be wonderful. And it's just nice to have a good reliable access point that I manage myself that's way more customizable. So yeah, this was a great project. I am back one week after installation to tell you a bit about um, how it's been for me. So the Raspberry Pi seems to have been working perfectly. I've got the four bars on my phone the whole time. Um, the only issue is it hasn't solved the problem of my phone dropping off the Wi-Fi. So I think this is an issue with my phone. It's an iPhone success, so it's quite old. I think this is an issue with the phone instead of with the AP. But it does mean that whenever I need to connect to another Raspberry Pi or anything else in my bedroom, I will have better signal, which is really useful. And it's... Um, And if I've got another phone or anything else in the future, then that will be great for signal strength as well. Um, let me know if you want to see more networking related videos. Um, any other... Let me know if you want to see any more networking related videos, any more Raspberry Pi related videos, anything else about home lab. I'm continuing to build up my little modest home lab, all basing it around Raspberry Pis. Um, because they're low energy usage as well, which is good in the current um, energy issues we have here in the United Kingdom. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Um, like and subscribe. And I am trying to upload more videos. Um, the reason I had uploaded more videos more regularly a few months ago was because it was the summer holidays for us here in the UK, so I wasn't at school. Um, but 
now. I haven't been able to upload as many, but I'm trying to spend more time doing YouTube stuff. So don't forget to subscribe, turn your notifications on, like, and comment down below. Let me know what you want to see and any other questions that I haven't addressed during this video. See ya.